Hello, welcome to Creepy Stuff, where we explore the darkest corners of our world and the shadows within our own minds. Tonight, I invite you to step into a realm of unsettling expression. A face locked in a twisted grin that has haunted history for centuries. This is the story of the sardonic smile. Imagine this. You're standing in a dimly lit room surrounded by flickering shadows. The air feels thick as though something unseen is watching, waiting. Then, from the corner of your eye, you see a face. Its mouth stretched unnaturally wide, the lips curling into a sinister smile that chills you to the bone. There's no joy in this smile. It's as though the person is trapped in a mask of eternal torment. You can't look away, but every second you stare, it pulls you deeper into its darkness. This is the sardonic smile. The term sardonic comes from an ancient and unsettling origin. It's believed to stem from the island of Sardinia, an isolated place off the coast of Italy. According to legend, the islanders had a disturbing custom. When the elderly or infirm had outlived their usefulness, they were forced to drink a toxic concoction made from a plant that grew wild in Sardinia. Hemlock water dropwort. The poison slowly coursing through their veins would paralyze their muscles starting with the face and the result a rictus grin a grotesque and permanent smile that overtook their features as they died they would be grinning as if they took their final breath a mocking expression in the face of death itself now, imagine the horror of watching a loved one or perhaps an enemy convulse in agony yet smiling as though they were being swallowed by a cruel unseen force. That smile became more than just a physiological response to poison. It became a symbol. The sardonic grin was a sign of something far more malevolent, something that could reach beyond the grave. The grin suggested they knew something dark, something we weren't meant to understand, something waiting for us on the other side. But what makes the sardonic smile truly horrifying is not just its ancient origins, it's how it continues to haunt us. This eerie expression has warmed its way into our culture, our art, our nightmares. You can see it in the masks worn by sadistic figures in horror films or in twisted caricatures of evil clowns. Think of how many times we've been unsettled by a smile that lingers too long or stretches a bit too wide, revealing too many teeth. Smiling is meant to be a sign of happiness, a reassurance of safety, but when a smile doesn't align with the situation, it becomes something monstrous. Think of the unsettling face of the Joker, grinning as he commits unspeakable atrocities. His smile isn't a reflection of joy, but chaos. It's disturbing because it forces us to question, how can anyone smile in the face of such horror? Is there something we're missing? Is the smile a mask? Or is it a glimpse into a deeper truth? 
that some forces in this world or beyond it take a perverse pleasure in our pain? In some folklore, the sardonic smile is not just a symbol of death, but a sign of possession. Some believed that a person's face twisted into that unnatural grin. They were no longer themselves. A dark force had entered their body, controlling them, forcing them to laugh at their own suffering, at their own mortality. Even more unsettling, this smile has been linked to conditions such as tetanus, where muscle contractions can cause a grimace that mimics the sardonic grin. In these cases, it isn't just the body failing, it's as though the body is rebelling, turning the act of smiling into something painful, grotesque. It's no wonder that in ancient times, people believed this grin was a sign of a curse, a punishment from the gods. It's the ultimate betrayal of the human form. Our face, the thing that conveys our deepest emotions, contorted into something unnatural, something inhuman. Now, let's delve into why this particular expression, the smile, has the power to evoke such dread. Smiling is, after all, one of our most basic forms of communication. It's supposed to be warm, inviting, but when it's out of place, when it defies context, it becomes a sign of madness. We're hardwired to sense when something is wrong and when a smile lingers on a face that should be crying or when someone smiles while telling you something awful our brains recoil. Because smiles are supposed to mean safety, but what if they don't? This is the uncanny nature of the sardonic smile. It takes what we know, what we trust, and warps it. The very thing we associate with comfort becomes a signal of danger. And the more we stare at it, the more it stares back, daring us to understand what lies behind that smile. Is it pain? Is it madness? Or is it something older, something darker? In recent years, this grin has even found its way into modern pop culture in the form of cursed images and unsettling memes, like faces smiling too widely, with eyes too empty, twisting into something unnervingly off. It's a reminder that even today, the sardonic smile holds a certain power over us. It lurks in the spaces where the familiar becomes strange, where comfort turns into terror. And perhaps that's the most horrifying part of all. It reminds us that in the end we have little control over the most primal parts of ourselves. Even something as innocent as a smile can become a weapon, a mask or a warning. So, the next time you catch a glimpse of a face smiling just a little too wide for just a little too long, look closer. Is it a gesture of kindness? Or is there something else lurking just beneath the surface? A secret that face knows, a darkness it's trying to hide, with a smile. Remember, sometimes it's the smiles you should fear most. Until next time, keep your eyes open and beware of the grins that come too easily.
Good night. And don't forget to smile. <laughs>